Has Australia's luck finally run out? Jim Rickards, in a recent strategic intelligence update, you said that Australia is in double trouble. What did you mean? Well, Nick, uh, first of all, there's no disputing the fact that, uh, of course, I've, I've been to Australia many times. A lot of friends down there love going there. And I know for as long as I remember, going back 40 years, it's been called the lucky country. That probably goes back even further. Uh, they had a technical recession uh, last year, along with the rest of the world, but it was very short lived and uh, came after, I think, 26 or 27 years without a recession, including several, you know, through the global financial crisis. So uh, Australia deserves the name. And uh it's, you know, it's got a lot of natural resources, uh, beautiful country, uh, very highly educated uh, people. Um, so so it has everything going forward and great trading relationships. So it's hard to kind of come up with a negative story on Australia. There is a problem. Um, and when I said that, when I said the double trouble, uh, I was referring to the possibility at the time of a new outbreak of the pandemic. Uh, and it's slowing down of um, uh, you know, basically the, the economy in China, with which Australia is very closely joined. Both of those things have now come to pass. And again, just to be clear, um, I'm very familiar with the Australian real estate market and the Australian labor market. Uh, unemployment slow, a lot of jobs being created, real estate's booming. So I don't want to suggest that you know, Australia is about to fall into the uh, Indian Ocean. Uh, but but the truth is, uh, you're, the new outbreak is severe. It's, it's popping up all over the world. This is not unique to uh, Australia. It's the so-called Delta variant. I don't want to turn this into a, a virology class, but it's a, it's, it's a you know, cousin, if you will, or a close relative of the original uh, virus. They use the word relative metaphorically. Scientists don't even agree if a virus is a living thing or not, but they're, they're around. Um, part of the genetic sequence of the genome code is different. Uh, the difference is appear to make it more contagious, uh, just to be clear, not necessarily more fatal. Uh, that's what we're seeing in the United States. Uh, the caseload is going up very steeply in the United States. That's clear and disputable. Uh, but the fatality rate is not, uh, which is good news. That means that's because treatments are better and uh, uh, facilities are better and people are more, you know, clinicians are more seasoned in terms of dealing with the virus. Australia's now got a lockdown, uh, extreme lockdown in Sydney. I read Australian news along with the news from all over the world. I think if you get in your car and try to leave town, you're, you're, you're put under arrest and actually put in jail. So that's a pretty serious lockdown. I think a curfew or stay at home type of situation. I'm not exactly sure what the situa situation is in Victoria. I know they've been through some severe lockdowns. So that's, that's coming back. It affects tourism. Uh, it affects supply chain. It affects consumption. Uh, so that, that's a little bit of a drag on Australian growth right there. The bigger drag, and why I use the phrase double trouble, is China. Um, China's slowing down dramatically. Um, they've got some outbreaks of the, the pandemic. They're, they're pretty ruthless uh, uh, about uh, you know, suppressing that. Uh, I don't mean suppressing the news. They do that too, but uh, you know, containing it. So I don't want to put too much weight on that. Uh, China's just in trouble economically. Too much debt. Uh, they rely too much on, um, you know, it's a, it's an input output factory. So the inputs are, you know, raw, raw materials, coal, iron ore, food, um, you know, soybeans, you know, uh, et cetera, and energy, certainly oil, natural gas, which they get from various sources, but probably Australia, Brazil, uh, and uh, a gutter for natural gas and Saudi Arabia for oil, Iran also are the major um, uh, countries from which uh, China buys its goods. And then they, they do kind of Lego style assembly manufacturing and they ship to the rest of the world, uh, uh, textiles and electronics and, and other goods. Well, the rest of the world's slowing down. The U.S. is slowing down. I think we're, we're going to get our GDP numbers. Uh, we'll see in a day or two for the second quarter. We'll see what they are. But the best estimates over the course of the quarter, the best estimates have dropped from 13 percent annualized to about 7 percent annualized. Now, as we sit here, you know, I, I don't know the number right now. But it looks like it's going to come in around that seven or eight percent level. We'll see, but that's down from earlier estimates to thirteen percent. So you know, good growth by some measures, but considering we're coming off the worst recession since 1946, um, you could expect those to be higher. But but the important thing is that over the course of the quarter, the numbers dropped, and the way this the, the particular metric I'm thinking of the um, Atlanta Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta GDP now so-called nowcast calculates it, um, 
that would actually indicate that growth slowed throughout the quarter so that July or sorry, June was, was significantly slower than, than April. Um, and a lot of other indicators, you know, lining up along those lines, uh, initial claims for unemployment have come down, but, but they're, but they're plateaued and they went up a little bit recently and so forth. So U S is slowing. Europe is definitely slowing. Well, Europe and U S are the markets that buy stuff from China. So if we're slowing, they're slowing. So China's got a, a bad mix of uh, a, a, a strong currency at the moment, which does not help their exports. Um, slowing in Europe and the U.S., which are major outlets for the stuff they buy. Um, and then, as I said, I mentioned a debt problem. And then um, this is a demographic disaster. That's maybe a subject for another day. That's a, a bigger subject. But all that means is they're going to be buying less stuff from Australia. So combine the lock, the pandemic lockdown with the Chinese slowdown and Australia is very dependent on China. When that relationship works, Australia wins, but when it doesn't work, Australia suffers the most. So that's a combination that will at, at a minimum slow the Australian economy, uh, probably not into another recession, but considering how much they were booming, even a significant slowdown is important.